most recent study we've done is now just coming up to a year ago. Uh, we worked with people in London, uh, Robin Cahart Harris and his group at Imperial, who've been pioneering the brain imaging of uh, people while taking psychedelics. Um, psilocybin, ketamine in low doses. In high doses, ketamine is an anesthetic. Low doses, it's a hallucinogenic and, and LSD, of course. Uh, and they have, again, they have, in this case, MEG, magnetoencephalography, which is basically the same as EEG. It's all measuring the, the fine electro electromagnetic fields that are generated by neural activity. Um, but what we can see here, quite interestingly, is that the level of complexity reliably, all these, this is zero, it always goes up. So there's a sort of increase in complexity um, in the psychedelic state compared to the baseline for all the different uh, compounds. And this was kind of interesting because we'd been looking for a while, were there any situations where we would see a measure of conscious level go above baseline rather than go down? This is so far still the only example uh, that, that we found. And of course, because it came from psychedelic drugs, we got all kinds of amusing headlines like, um, brain scans reveal evidence for a higher state of consciousness, and, um, which is, of course, not, not, tr not really true. And they say, oh, why, why do we need science to do that? You know, of course we know that, that hallucinogenics give you a higher state of consciousness. What we've actually found is that on a particular measure of neural signal complexity or diversity, that there's a reliable difference in the brain that is, goes the opposite direction from sleep, anesthesia, and, and so on. Um, there's basically more disorganization in the psychedelic brain. Um, the Daily Mail also wrote it up, but being the Daily Mail, they had to accompany it by a very large sidebar pointing to all the dangers of, of LSD, um, which I do find, you know, much as I love the Daily Mail, I find, um, which is not very much, um, find it quite annoying bec because the work of Robin's group here and other groups too, and one reason we're interested in is that there is enormous promise in, in psychedelic drugs for uh, treatment of things like depression and PTSD. Um, and I think it's hugely, it's a big tragedy for medical science that these, uh, this line of research has been, until very recently, closed down and is still very much under threat. We, we're still continuing this work, actually. This is just to show you some of the stuff that we're doing right at the moment. Um, it's still on the same data, but what we've done here with uh, my colleague Lionel Barnett is we've looked in more detail at the dynamics of the brain in the psychedelic state. And we found something which I still find, which I find very interesting and I'm still struggling to understand, which is that for each of the psychedelic compounds, this is the brain divided up into 90 different small regions. So again, it's MEG data. And here, if we just look at the correlation in activity between the different regions, how much the, you know, the brain signal moves together, we see it goes up compared to baseline. Red is more. So the br brain regions are more highly synchronized in the psychedelic state, which is weird. Um, but then if we look at this other measure, and this I think is a measure that's not often applied in neuroscience. This is a measure called Granger causality. What it basically does is it measures information flow. It doesn't look at how correlated different brain regions are. It looks at how well you can predict one region from knowing what's going on in another region. It's different, so, and it's, so it's really about the flow of information rather than how different brain regions are moving together. And if you look at this measure, you see it goes down. Blue is less than zero compared to baseline. So this is evidence that the parts of the brain are speaking to each other less frequently or less intensively or less by this measure in the psychedelic state, although they seem to be more correlated. And in most experiments, this is a bit harder to measure statistically. So in many studies, people only look at this and they say, ah, the brain is more synchronized, so there's more communication going on between brain regions. What we find is the opposite. And um, so we need to understand that and see if that generalizes to other things like what happens when you fall asleep. We don't know that yet. Hopefully, find out soon. But anyway, this is the main result that this measure, but back to the idea of measurement, this measure of conscious level goes up uh, when you're in the psychedelic state. Now, the I think the, the reason to focus on measures like this, that try to characterize uh, consciousness in terms of the complexity of the neural dynamics, this is interesting because it's based on a particular theory about what consciousness actually is and how it should relate 
to um, underlying mechanisms, back to this idea of the real problem, trying to map between mechanism and phenomenology.